Hello and welcome to the 1 160 of a second photography podcast. Today's episode is called Room 101. Now Room 101 was a BBC series, maybe it's gone to America, so it's a UK series, maybe it's gone to America and other countries in a different format as these things tend to. And it had Nick Hancock who would have celebrities come on and he would talk to them and say what do you want to put in Room 101? And he would decide whether it was valid. So it was mainly things like pet peeves and stuff. And today I've thought about my room 101 for photography and it is going to be pet peeves and things I hate. And it's always going to be around people. It's going to be around other people because when you have pet peeves, you're not annoyed with a blade of grass, the weather. Although maybe I am annoyed with the weather. Maybe I'm annoyed with things, but you can always track them down to people. So let's talk about my room 101 for photography. And probably my biggest pet peeve or my biggest thing that I want to put in Room 101 or the thing that came to me first right off the tip of my tongue was people thinking it's easy. And in some respects, it is easy. If you're an experienced photographer, it is easy. If you're not an experienced photographer, you can still take a photo, can't you? You can still get your camera out or your smartphone out and you can take a photo. And there's nothing difficult about that. You've taken a photo you have a photo, it will be correctly exposed if it's an auto mode. Will it be any good? No. Will it be blurry? Probably. Will it be the wrong composition? Yes. Will the background be too bright? All these things that go into a photo that people just just don't consider. So if I'm taking a photo of a person and I want to get even if it's outside I want to get a good balance exposure I'm going to have to use flash I'm going to have to use if it's if it's a sunny day I'm going to have to use high speed sync I'm going to have to underexpose the person I'm going to or expose for the background essentially and then I'm going to have to balance that with flash so I'm going to have to have flashes triggers am I going to have one flash am I going to have two flashes and even if the photo looks completely natural which is what I would be aiming for I've still done it artificially because I've used flash and then I need to edit that photo if I want a really pro result and maybe I need to do some retouching of that photo but people look at it and it looks natural say oh yeah well done the photo and people don't realize maybe how much effort was put into it or that it isn't just taking a picture even if it's things like family snaps or just snaps, you've got to not get a blurry image. You've got to have your shutter speed fast enough that you're not going to get motion. Well, you want sometimes you want motion, but you're not going to get blur due to holding it or blur due to people moving in the shot. So people think it's easy. And that's one of my pet peeves. Probably the one that follows on from that is people thinking they can do that themselves. And yeah, some people can do it themselves. And like I say, anyone can take a picture, but can they recreate or take with such skill the picture you were taking? And can they do it as quickly? And can they do it as well? Well, the answer is probably no. People say, oh, it's just taking a picture, just pressing a button. And really not having any appreciation of what goes into that. So that's a nice picture. Yeah, I can do that. Not realising They'll need light stands, they'll need flash, they'll need syncing, they'll need post-processing, etc. You know, even as simple as, oh, that's a nice landscape image. I don't think people would appreciate that that was taken on a tripod at F11. And it also had some filters on the front of the camera. And it was using a DSLR and it was using a certain, certain focal length. No, people won't appreciate that. They'll turn up at the same place with their smartphone and be surprised when they don't get the same results. So yes, definitely a pet peeve. Another pet peeve is people judging you for your gear. So people will judge you if you don't have gear, people will judge you if you have too much gear. Gear is and is not important. I've always said this, you need a minimum amount of gear to do what you want. You need enough gear that you've got creative control. So anyone who says gear isn't important, I understand where they're coming from, but I do disagree. For example, I go back to that um, fashion or portrait image I talked about at the start. I need a flash. So anyone saying to me, oh, gear is not important. Well, I need to buy a flash to get what I want. I need a light stand. I need a modifier. 
don't have to buy the top of the range flash modifier or light stand. I could get someone to hold the flash instead of a light stand, but I do need that gear. What I found, because I have bought gear, I bought gear for podcasting, video, photography. I've found if you buy certain gears, you get to do things faster because it's easier. So you get to do things quicker. Now, here's a really good example of a gear thing. I've got a 360 camera and it takes video and it takes photographs and I can get that out of my pocket, press a button when I'm somewhere. And then when I get home, I can edit it the way I want. And I've, there's no shake in the footage because it's got stabilization built in. I can reframe it afterwards. And you could say you could do that with a mobile phone. Yes, I could, but I don't, my mobile phone's not very good. So I need a gimbal. I don't have a top of the range mobile, so I need a gimbal. But then I've got to take everything out of my pocket. I've got to assemble the gimbal. I've got to put the phone in. I've got to balance it. And while it's not that hard, it's still an extra step to take. Whereas compare that to pressing a button, you know, it's much easier just to press a button and sort it out later. So if things are easier, you're going to get them done quicker. You're going to do more of them in the same amount of time. Are you going to record more or film more or photograph more in the same amount of time, which is important because if it takes too long, you might not do it. So I think gear is important to a certain extent, but where it's not important is if you have a 5D Mark III or a 5D Mark IV or people picking their wedding photographer because they've got a 5D Mark IV and this wedding photographer has a 5D Mark II. Well, they can't be very good, you know, that sort of thing. So essentially a gear snobbery. I read somewhere about a photographer. He posted in this forum I read that he turned up to do a model shoot and the model said, that's not a professional camera and walked off. Doesn't matter. I could do a model shoot and just want to do it with my iPhone, even though, as I've said, it's not a very good one. And if God, if I was paying the model or if I was providing images for free and a TFP arrangement, then really the model should trust me and, you know, be happy with what I'm using. And you can get amazing images with your smartphone. You know, you might surprise that model who walked off. She might be really pleased with them. If she's not really pleased with them, they might be suitable for her Instagram because they look like they've been taken on a smartphone. So there's wins everywhere. But yeah, judging people for gear is another pet peeve. Obsession over technical detail at the expense of fun. Most of us, myself included, are hobbyists. We do it as a hobby. I you know, do podcasts and YouTube and other things, but not as my main income. I'm not a pro at that. They're all hobbies. They're all hobbies I do. This is a hobby. So it does slightly grate on me when people obsess over technical because we do it for fun. We do it as a hobby. So saying, oh, no, 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 no. I, I'm afraid I just cannot use that lens or, oh, no, I can't go there. I can't do that. Oh, I wouldn't touch that. Oh, God, you've used, you've used a 16 megapixel camera. Why aren't you using a full frame camera? You use micro four thirds. Oh my God, you know, that sort of thing. It's snobbery. If I want to use a film camera, that's up to me. If I want to use a camera from 1998, one of the first digital cameras, that's up to me. That's up to me. Um, it's nothing to do with anyone else. I don't want to be judged on it. And probably my last one, which is very similar to people thinking they can do it, is this concept of fix it in post. I've been somewhere, I've I've taken photos and someone said, oh, yeah, we can fix that in Photoshop, meaning I can fix it in Photoshop. Again, it comes down to them having this expectancy that things can be done really quickly and easily, but having not done it themselves, they don't know. I might not be able to fix it in Photoshop. It might, I might need, I'm, I might need to employ a professional to fix in Photoshop. It might not be fixable in post. I remember I talked to someone who worked in TV and they said the show they worked on, there was a big thing of fix it in post. And you can't always fix it in post. Sometimes you have to reshoot it if it's dreadful, re-record it or retake it. You can't fix it in post and get the desired outcome you're looking for. So 
I mean, I did a photo shoot for someone um, and they said, yeah, 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 have those as blurry backgrounds. And I'd actually taken the images and I'd actually set, taken the images with a high f-stop so there or a small f-stop depending how you want to look at a high number value so there was no way they were going to be blurry background because I'd already taken them and I'd taken them at too high an f-stop for them to be blurred out now I could go into Photoshop I could blur the background but it wouldn't look right and there was nothing wrong with the images they just had that thought later on now I think a company called Lytro came out with a camera a couple of years ago or maybe five or ten years ago where you could in editing change the focal point it did something clever it never caught on that technology but the technology was quite good in that you could take a picture and then change your focus afterwards I think Panasonic have something similar they must take lots and lots of pictures at changing the focal focal or focus substantially during sort of the bracketing of those those images but yeah people just assume you can you can do it and you can do it maybe if you plan for it but certainly doing it afterwards or fixing it in post doesn't always work so i think i've had one two three four i've had five five things I've put in room 101 of course I'm the judge so they're all going in room 101 Nick Hancock isn't going to stop me putting anything in today but I'd love to know what are your pet peeves about photography and what would you put in room 101 if you had the chance and if you want to send in your ideas to me or leave comments and stuff I'd love that I'd love to know if my pet peeves are completely different to other people's pet peeves if we share any I'd love to know that stuff and maybe I can do a user, not a user, maybe I can do a listener room 101. That would be excellent. And I could be the judge and decide what goes in and what doesn't. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. It's been great. Things are starting to get a little bit safer. So I hope you're going to be getting out and doing some photography soon. All the best. Goodbye.